Is this all tying up together? When the white blood cell says the body is immunocompromised and then we see a bunch of calcium in the blood? That's way too much foreshadowing for one episode of an anime. Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Aina and I am oncology pharmacist. I used a clip of cells at work in my video about Iron Mouse immunodeficiency condition and I got a lot of comments about this anime. But I need to confess. I've only seen clips of this anime and I've never watched a full episode. So today, let's watch some episodes of Cells at Work together and see what I missed. Wait, who are these elegant looking ladies? Are there any clues? Okay, so they're dressed in white, drinking tea. There's a picture of the heart on the wall. There's a guy in a hazmat suit holding a teapot? Who are they? The art style is so cute. I like this anime already. Oh, what's happening? Oh no! So this must represent a pneumococcus bacteria because I think this episode's name is pneumococcus. I bet this is a specific type of white blood cells called neutrophils. We normally call neutrophils NUTS or ANC, which stands for absolute neutrophil count. Because the word neutrophil is just too long to say or write out. So neutrophils are the most common type of white blood cells and they make up to 50 to 80% of all your white blood cells. The show did a very good portrayal because neutrophils are always the first ones to come to the site of infection. They're like the frontline firefighters. The anime also did a good job in portraying them visually. The red blood cells are a little bit shorter and the white blood cell is this tall, serious, brooding looking guy. Um, and in real life, red blood cells are a lot smaller than white blood cells. <laughs> Oh, one got away. Oh. <laughs> These are macrophages? Okay, in real cell pictures, they look gigantic and scary. Macrophages are actually the largest white blood cells and I love how in the show they made them look like elegant ladies. So the reason why the macrophages are still chilling in their room is because usually during the first 24 hours of an infection, it's the neutrophils that are on the scene fighting the infection, and the macrophages usually come out about 24 hours after. When they get to the germs, they can actually surround the germs and kill them that way. They also release toxic chemicals from their cells to kill the germs. They also help with the cleanup of dead cells from your body, so maybe that's what the guys in hazmat suits represent. <laughs> Oh no, that's also the wrong way. I think that's a killer T cell, another type of white blood cell, because on his hat it just says kill. I'm already getting the sense that this anime is quite smart because you can see that the killer T cell is just holding a mug and just chilling. They work a little bit differently from the neutrophils that we saw earlier. Neutrophils are a part of the innate immune response and these cells are a part of adaptive immune response. So it takes a lot more and a lot longer to activate them. I've said this multiple times on my channel, but immunology is super confusing. But basically these type of cells need to be activated through recognition of something called an antigen and they can be present on these foreign cells or even your own body cells that's been infected and then after this recognition they'll know to kill these type of cells 
金が血管の中に逃げたんだからなえどういうっていうか全然ほどけてませんよ肺炎球菌が引き起こす病気は肺炎だけじゃない肺炎球菌菌血症という病気があるんだ Obviously just from the name Pneumonia is one type of disease that can be caused by pneumococcus bacteria The biggest difference between bronchitis which is something relatively mild we typically wouldn't even give antibiotics Versus pneumonia is bronchitis usually only affects the airway that travels to your lungs, but pneumonia affects the actual air sacs, which we call alveoli, that's deep in the lungs. Pneumococcus bacteria can also cause other types of infectious diseases, such as meningitis, which is an infection that affects the lining of the brain or spinal cord, otitis media, which is an infection of the middle ear. Also, worst case scenario, it can cause bacteremia, which is infection in the blood. 24時間程度で全身を侵略することもあるそそんな病気がああ今この体免疫力が低下してるからないつもなら大丈夫なんだが Since this body's immune system has been compromised Huh I wonder what this person has I don't think they mentioned anything in the beginning I'm curious to find out though Yeah for sure if someone's immunocompromised then their immune system isn't very good at responding to foreign infections like this. I talked a lot about that in Iron Mouse Immunodeficient Condition video, so if you're interested, I'll put the link down below. Oh, they're so cute! Again, a really good job in depicting the sizes. So platelets are really, really small compared to red blood cells and white blood cells, so I love how they use little kids to depict the platelets. Also, in terms of the age, platelets live in the body for about 7 to 10 days, and the blood cell that has the shortest lifespan is actually neutrophils. They die quite fast. They live only for about 24 hours in the blood. So Mr. White Blood Cell here, we might not see him in episode 2. Red blood cells though live for a lot longer. They last for about 120 days in the blood. Obviously, the main red blood cell character is new here. As we can see, she's getting lost in the body. But a mature red blood cell probably will look like an old lady in this anime. Oh, Road work. What does that say? Is that CA2? It can't be CAZ. I don't think there's any compound in the body that's CAZ. So that's probably CA2, which is calcium. So this is saying there's a lot of calcium in the blood, which we would call hypercalcemia. Interesting, because in cancer, we often monitor calcium levels in the blood. Normally, most of our body's calcium is stored in the bones, and our body is really good at releasing exact amount of calcium that we need into the blood. So if the blood's calcium level is too low, we're going to tell the bones to release some more calcium. But if it's too high, we're going to tell the bones to reabsorb back some of the calcium. But if there's cancer in the bones, it actually messes with how it regulates calcium. So oftentimes we'll see too much calcium released into the blood. It doesn't always mean that the patient has bone cancer. It could be other types of cancer that has metastasized to the bones. Hypercalcemia can be quite serious and we often have to treat it in our cancer patients. And the drugs that we use to treat it is kind of interesting. It's the same type of drug that we use to treat brittle bones generally in older people called osteoporosis because how these drugs work is they tell the bones to basically stop releasing more calcium and retain more into the bones. So in osteoporosis case, you're building stronger bones. But in hypercalcemia's case, it's telling the body to stop releasing more calcium to the blood. Is this all tying up together? When the white blood cell says the body is immunocompromised and then we see a bunch of calcium in the blood? That's way too much foreshadowing for one episode of an anime. Okay, we're gonna move on to episode 7, which is called Cancer Cell. Oh my god, this is actually tying up together. Let me know if you think I should watch more episodes of Cells at Work. I also saw some comments talking about Cells at Work Black. I'm not sure if that's a season 2 or like a spin-off of the show. Let me know if I should watch those as well. Busted. Okay, okay. Let me guess. This is a cancer cell that's disguised as a normal cell. And this lady is maybe a cell that's part of the immune system that's supposed to kill cancer cells? <gasps> Yo, he's transforming! Oh my god! 
肝細胞細胞の遺伝子に異常が起きて無機動に増殖するようになった細胞 I talked a lot about how cancer cells are formed in the video called Why Whales Don't Get Cancer, and I'll leave that link down below as well if you want to check it out. But the basic idea is quite simple. Cancer cells are cells that don't die on their own. They also can escape the body's immune system, and they can keep making copies of themselves to eventually form a tumor. Also, I love the animation. It definitely reminds me of the third act of Akira with all the proliferating arms and the tumor like bulges. It looks very cool, very cancer like. But I really want to know who this lady is supposed to represent. I think by now I can tell the show is quite smart, so I'm sure she has a true identity here. <laughs> Oh, hey, it's the same white blood cell. He's still alive after 24 hours has passed, I assume. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, this lab and this room is giving me insane Evangelion vibes. Oh my god. <laughs> Ah, natural killer cells. So they're specifically there to kill your own body cells that have been infected by a virus or they have turned cancerous. And they can actually destroy these harmful cells in their early stages. They're different from the killer T cells because they actually don't need prior exposure to the pathogen. So, killer T cells, like I said, need this antigen recognition. And to recognize an antigen, you've had to have exposed to it before, right? But natural killer cells don't need that. Natural killer cells just patrol your body and they scan for any harmful cells. And once they find out that a cell is harmful, they can just kill it directly. <laughs> I love the use of red and blue colors to represent the growth from each of his arms. They actually kind of look like blood vessels, right? Red represents the arteries and blue represents the veins because tumors can actually start growing their own blood vessels so they can transport more nutrients and resources to their site. So I feel like this is a really good visual representation of cancer. Whoa, that's a lot of food. So they must be transporting nutrients to the tumor site. So the tumor can actually release this chemical called inflammatory cytokines, which basically stimulates this inflammatory response in your body and it draws a lot of red blood cells into the site. And when the red blood cell comes, they come with nutrients. <laughs> oh no, his body got caught. That's insane that this show is able to make a cancer cell into a sympathetic villain and give him this backstory. Really good storytelling here. <laughs> Whoa, this is giving me Avengers Assemble vibes. That's so ominous. That's so interesting because cancer recurrence is definitely something that we always want to prevent. And there's a term in cancer treatment that's called micrometastases. It's where a collection of very small cancer cells that have spread to other parts of the body through the lymphatic system, but they're too small for us to detect it. And unfortunately, with our current technology, whether it's a mammogram, CT scan, PET scan, MRI, there's just no way for us to see them, 
on the image. So when we thought the patient is cured, we didn't know that they actually have metastasized. Ooh, I wonder if they're gonna have a future episode talking about recurrent cancer because that will be so interesting. I really enjoyed watching this anime. I feel like it's super educational and also really, really fun. If you also like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more contents like this. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.